Before we get to today's presentation, I have to take a moment for some shameless self-promotion. On March 9th and 10th, 2019, some of the crew and I will be doing a personal appearance at the gun show at the Polk County Fairgrounds in Rick Real, Oregon. We'll have a table with some guns displayed. A lot of people have asked about t-shirts. We'll have some of the prototypes on hand. We'd love to get some input, and depending on what input we get, we'll decide which ones will or won't go into production. Also, a lot of people have asked about the cars. We'll have those there, too. Should be a lot of fun. Okay, let's get to today's presentation. Hi, we're out on the range today, so please bear with the gunfire here in the background. And today, once again, we're talking about 380 ACP. Now, there's no question that relatively small auto-loading pistols in caliber 380 ACP are very popular for concealed carry, and I brought several models with me today I'd like to shoot. This comes with the caveat that in the past, we've done a couple of presentations comparing a certain model of 380 ACP to a very similar model in caliber 9x19. I've also compared 380 ACP as a cartridge to 38 Special in their role as concealed carry calibers. And we've done a couple of presentations on 380 ACP ammunition selection. So today's presentation might have some redundant material. Now the pistols I've brought are a Smith & Wesson Bodyguard, the Ruger LCP, the Rock Island Armory Baby Rock, a Glock Model 42, and the Smith & Wesson Walther PPK. These pistols are in many ways dissimilar to each other, but they are similar in that they're relatively small auto-loading pistols in caliber 380 ACP. So let's shoot these side by side and see how they compare. The first thing I want to talk about is accuracy. Now when you move outside the realm of pure academia into the real world of real people really shooting real firearms, You'll hear sometimes the term accuracy square, I think it's more of a trapezoid, and it's firearm, ammunition, environment, and shooter. Well, in this case, the shooter will be me, the environment won't change, I'll use the same ammunition for every firearm, so the only variable will be which pistol I'm using. And within that, the three main things that will affect my ability to shoot these pistols accurately will be the size and shape of it, primarily the grip, yes, which one fits my hand better, the sights, and the trigger pull. So what I'll do is shoot these five targets with our five different pistols from 15 yards and let's see how they compare.
Well, here's the results, and we can clearly see I can shoot some of these pistols better than others. Now, with the Smith & Wesson bodyguard, we see one shot is completely off the target. Normally, I'd say that's a flyer, that's just me. In this case, it wasn't. There was something really wrong there. The LCP I'm using has big high visibility sights, at least big for an LCP, and the front sight has a dot on it and the sights are very easy to see, but because of the way the gun fits my hand and the fact that I do not like the trigger pull, I see a rather poor group. Now with the Glock we see a very good group, and the one shot that's outside that group, that is just me. Normally I'm not a big fan of Glocks, I don't like the way they fit my hand, I don't like the trigger pull, I don't like that white dot front sight with the white outline rear sight. But in this case, the Glock 42 has a shorter, crisper trigger than other Glocks I've fired. And when shooting a black target, the white dot front sight with the white outline rear sight helped me out a great deal. Now by contrast, the Baby Rock just has typical black sights, which are what I usually prefer. But against this black target, I was having trouble seeing it, especially in this sun glare. And the group shows that. And with the PPK, we got a marginal group. And this brings up the curiosity, if I were to change the color of the targets, would that change the results we got? Well, with the bodyguard and the LCP, I can tell you no, but with the other three pistols, it might. So let me put up three targets that are different colors, and let's see what kind of results we get with the Baby Rock, the PPK, and the Glock 42. Well, there's our results, and with the PPK, I think it helped me a little bit to change the color of the target. With the Rock Island Armory, not one bit. If anything, the group is worse. With the Glock, interesting thing is I fired six shots. There's only four holes in the target. Two of those shots keyhole. So it looks like we have a clear winner. Now, that brings up a couple of questions. How does the Glock and the PPK compare in terms of size and weight? You know, for size, they're virtually identical. The PPK has a slightly bigger grip, but this PPKS has a seven-shot magazine, for the Glock only has a six. But in terms of weight, the Glock is significantly less, and in terms of price, also significantly less. We'll get back to shooting in a few minutes, but fair warning, this is one of the boring segments where I talk, and what I want to talk about is magazine capacity as it relates to selecting a concealed carry handgun, and I do mean specifically concealed carry handgun, not military or police applications and not home defense guns, that can be a slightly different topic. Now a moment ago you heard me say that the PPKS and the Glock 42 are a very similar size, the main difference being that the PPKS has a larger grip, primarily to accommodate its seven shot magazine instead of a six shot magazine. And that brings up the question, how important is that seventh round? How important is magazine capacity as it relates to concealed carry handguns? There are many different opinions, I can only offer mine, and my opinion is, as always, based on my training, my education, my experience, different people have different experiences, so they have different opinions. And what I would say is that when a citizen is selecting a concealed carry handgun, there's a long list of criteria that goes into that. Things like, how does the gun fit your hand? Things like cost. This pistol had a price tag of over $100 more than this one. This had a price tag of over $100 more than this one. Cost can be a very big factor. And of all the factors that you have to take into consideration, magazine capacity is on that list, but in my opinion, it's fairly far down the list. 
most certainly lower on the list than four other factors I want to discuss briefly. One of those being that you have a pistol that functions correctly and functions reliably. Now when I say reliably I mean with minimal malfunctions. When I say functions correctly I mean that when the safety is engaged and you pull the trigger it doesn't go off. When the safety is disengaged and you pull the trigger it goes off. Functions correctly. The second thing is that it has to be a design that allows you to operate it safely and effectively. Now this Rock Island Armory Baby Rock is basically a 1911 platform, which is a design that's very popular and has been very popular for a long time. It helps me illustrate this point. Guns like this are designed to be carried with a round in the chamber, the hammer cocked, the safety engaged, and then placed in the correct design of holster. When you do that, it can be carried very safely, but when you bring this pistol out, it requires that the shooter have enough training and experience that they remember to disengage the safety before they fire, and re-engage the safety when they're done firing. Some handguns, like this PPKS, if it's cocked and you want to lower this hammer on a loaded chamber, you just hit the decock lever. Guns like this Baby Rock don't have a decock lever. To lower this hammer on a loaded chamber, you have to disengage the safety, disengage the grip safety, hold the hammer down with your thumb while you keep the trigger depressed, lower that down, and then put it on half cock for safety, or just lower it to half cock. Now doing this is pretty easy if you have the correct amount of manual dexterity and you've practiced it enough. Some people are not willing to practice it enough and don't have the dexterity. Certain guns are not for certain people. It has to be a handgun that you can operate safely and effectively. Third, it has to be a handgun that allows you to hit what you are shooting at. When I demonstrate handguns like this, I'll sometimes shoot 25 or even 50 yards, and there are always those who say the demonstration is superfluous, because in real life, you would never do that. Different people carry different handguns in different jurisdictions for different purposes under different conditions. It's really not good to make the blanket statement of saying to other people what they would or wouldn't do. Now, one of my favorite concealed carry handguns is the Smith & Wesson Model 36. It's a swing out cylinder, five shot, 38 special revolver that's double action and it can be fired in a single action mode. Cocking that hammer gives you a very short, crisp trigger pull which allows a lot of people, myself included, to more accurately shoot targets that are small or distant. There are versions of this revolver that don't have an exposed hammer. They're double action only. And there are people who always advise that you should get the double action only version because in real life you would never cock the hammer. I've used this revolver in single action mode many times for many reasons, including things like being at a muzzle loading rifle trail walk shoot where someone couldn't see the target he was supposed to shoot at it because it was yellow and it was out in some dry grass and I didn't want to reshoot my muzzle loading rifle having to reload it. So I pulled this revolver out of my pocket, was able to shoot the steel clanger at 50 yards, making it swing so he could see where it was. Different people use their handguns under different conditions. I've actually shot a running deer at 25 yards with this revolver. Now, most people will not be called upon to shoot a deer with their concealed carry handgun, but the point is, different people will use their gun under different circumstances to shoot different targets so what I shoot at might not be the same thing as what you shoot at and you have to be able to hit what you are shooting at with your handgun. Now the fourth thing is that you have to have a handgun of the correct size, weight, and design that it fosters program compliance. If I were to compare these two handguns, the Breda 92FS in caliber 9x19 and the Ruger LCP in caliber 380 ACP. 9x19 with a long barrel versus 380 with a short barrel. Clearly more powerful. A larger grip, big high visibility sights, a good trigger pull. I can certainly shoot this a lot more accurately than I can this. 15 shot mag versus 6 shot mag. In any kind of defensive shooting it would seem this is the clear winner. And although I do carry this gun sometimes, there are certain situations where its size and weight prohibit me carrying it. For other people in other situations, perhaps even more so. And it's been said many ways, but this in your pocket beats this that you left at home. You have to have program compliance. So to recap, 
functions correctly and reliably. You have to be able to operate it safely and effectively. You have to hit what you are shooting at and program compliance. Those four factors are, in my opinion, significantly more important than magazine capacity. But magazine capacity is on the list. And just how important is it? The only way I can express that is to say that when talking about concealed carry type of citizen involved shootings, accurate statistics as to how many rounds someone fires are extremely difficult to get. But as far as I can put together, three or four shots seems to be very common. So it would appear that the six plus one would be plenty, especially if you're carrying an extra magazine, which you should be if you can. But it comes back to how important is that seventh or eighth round? And I would ask the question, are there situations where a citizen resolves the problem in two rounds? Yes. Are there situations where the citizen can't resolve it in two but does resolve it with the third or fourth? Certainly yes. Are there situations where a citizen can't resolve it with four but does resolve it with the fifth or sixth shot? Yes, but not nearly as often. Are there situations where a citizen can't resolve it in six but does resolve the problem with the seventh or eighth shot? Yes, but that's getting to be pretty rare. So it would appear that having a handgun with the seven shot mag might sometimes be an advantage over a handgun with a six shot mag, but not very often. So what's the bottom line as far as selecting a handgun in relation to magazine capacity? I would say that you should get a handgun with that seventh round. Magazine capacity is important, but not if magazine capacity comes at the cost of program compliance or accuracy. The six shots that I was able to put on that target accurately with this are in my opinion a whole lot better than the seven shots that I couldn't shoot very accurately out of this. So that having been said, let's get back to shooting. The next thing I want to discuss in our comparison of different 380 ACP handguns is power. Now they're all the same caliber, but barrel length can affect velocity, typically a longer barrel delivering more velocity. That's not always the case, but typically. Now what I've got is Fiocchi 380 ACP 90 grain XTP hollow point, and I have that loaded into my Ruger LCP with its two and three quarter inch barrel, and my Rock Island Armory Baby Rock with its three and a half inch barrel. So let's see to what degree, if any, an extra three quarters of an inch of barrel can make in velocity. And we'll start with the LCP. 815. 846. 860. 851. and 8.30. Now let's try the baby rock. 9 9.31 and 951. Now let's go crunch those numbers. You may have noticed with the LCP I fired five rounds, with the Baby Rock I fired six. My initial reading with the Baby Rock was 936, followed by another identical 936. When you get identical readings in a row like that, it's indicative there may have been an error with the chronograph, so I threw one of those 936s out. Having done that, I crunched the numbers, and with the LCP I got a mean velocity of 840 feet per second. With the Baby Rock, 940 feet per second, 100 feet per second more. It would appear that an extra three quarters of an inch of barrel can make a lot of difference. But how much difference will that extra 100 feet per second make in effectiveness on the target? Let's give that a whirl. This is the meat target, which unfortunately today isn't going to have any leather jacket skin. 
but it is pork steak pectorals followed by pork ribs, a bag of grapefruit to simulate lung tissue, more pork ribs on the back, four layers of t-shirt on the front, four layers on the back, and the whole thing followed by the new and improved high-tech fleece bullet stop. And I'll shoot it with our Fiocchi 380 ACP 90 grain XTP hollow point loaded into our Ruger LCP2 with its two and three quarter inch barrel and I'll shoot from seven yards and see what kind of effect we get. And what we've got is marginal damage to our ribs on the front, marginal damage to our orange lung tissue, marginal damage to the ribs on the back, and all the projectiles stopped by the t-shirt on the back of the target or the first layer of fleece. Now let me show you a close-up of what these projectiles look like. And of our four projectiles, we see one with a little bit of expansion, the others have very little or none. Now I've got a new meat target set up, and I'll shoot from seven yards with our baby rock, and we'll see if adding 100 feet per second velocity adds anything to our performance. So by increasing our velocity by 100 feet per second, I'm seeing a lot more damage to our pork steak pectoral, a lot more damage to the ribs on the front of the target, tremendously more damage to our grapefruit lung tissue, and still holes completely through the ribs on the back of the target, with all of the projectiles being stopped by the t-shirt on the back of the target. Now, let me show you a close-up of what these projectiles look like. And when we increase our velocity by 100 feet per second, we increase our expansion significantly. So we see that barrel length can make a difference and sometimes can make the difference. We also see that some types of ammunition might perform well in one firearm while they don't perform so well in another type. There are a lot of different types of 380 ACP ammo on the market, some of which is very good and some of which is not. And we do have a couple of presentations on selecting 380 ACP ammo where I shoot a variety of types. So it looks like the takeaway from today is that a compact 380 ACP can foster program compliance with the right combination of gun and shooter. And looking at the results of our meat target, I can say that a 380 ACP can be effective with the right combination of gun and ammo. So the bottom line is you have to find the right gun for you and then find the right ammo for your gun. So as always, don't try this at home. I'm what you call a professional. And thanks for watching the compact 380 ACP video.